The title of this video is not clickbait. This is literally the most un unexpected problem that I have ever experienced in my 37 years of building computers. Hey, Day. Day. Mm. Day. What? We got work to do. Yeah. I'm playing World of Warships. Yeah. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval strategy game where you command the most iconic and famous warships from World War I and World War II, recreate it with stunning detail and accuracy. Build your fleet while participating in various game types while upgrading your ship's arsenal along the way. New players who sign up using my link below will receive an exclusive starter pack to get you up and running quickly by receiving seven days premium time, one million credits, 300 doubloons, and the tier five premium ship, the Exeter. So what are you guys waiting for? Start sinking ships with World of Warships by heading to the description below and getting your freebies. All right, so if you haven't watched the, if you, haven't, if you haven't watched the build video on this, so what this is, this is Phil's NRP 200 Max um, build that we did for him, what, a couple of years ago? And then it's had a few iterations since then. He had 9900K in there, I think, and then he upgraded to the 13700K. He then uh, went from a 3080 to the 3090 Founders Edition. And then for a while there, he was, I, I joked, I was like, hey, we should water cool your system. He was like, okay. And I was like, haha, funny. And then, I don't know, a while went by. And then this week, I was like, hey, I wanna, let's do the water cooled build. So many things went wrong in the process of that build. Why can't it ever just be easy? But I still got it done within uh, 24 hours of starting it. It was built and assembled. And then I was dealing with trying to get it bled, which was a pain in the butt because there's no reservoir in this system. But I finally got it bled by having just kind of created a couple of, well, penises on the thing basically, <laughs> but I don't know how else to describe it. Thanks. Anyway, <laughs> physics. I, I understood enough of the water cooling physics to figure it out, got it bled. And then I was like, Phil, come check it out. And it shut off. And I'm like, that's not normal. Hit the power button, nothing would happen. Turn on? No, it's not gonna turn on right now. So that tells me it went into some sort of an OCP, because one of the, an overcurrent protection. Because what I heard was they go, like a big click when it does it. That click is the breaker built into the power supply that deter that can tell when something's not right with the electrical system and rather than having the system fry itself, it tries to save it by tripping that breaker. Now that's a time breaker, which means it takes enough time of not being energized for it to finally pop back. There's like a capacitor in there that holds it in its position. So it takes time for that capacitor to discharge so that it can flip back to the other position. And what we would do is we would, I would unplug, now this is where the symptoms start. This is, that, that's the symptom right there. It would turn on, run, we get to windows like this, Phil would start like Cinebench or something and then it would just immediately crash. And I'll show you right now um, with Cinebench running, like it runs just fine. I might as well show you, talk to you about some of the temperatures and stuff here. Phil was initially hitting power limit uh, and well at first he was hitting thermal limit uh, with the 280 AIO and now it's 95C was just whoosh, immediate thermal limiting. Then after we did the water cooling loop, we were able to get a couple of runs in before it started shutting off. He started getting power limit, which is a good thing because that tells us the CPU was trying to really bump itself up. Phil had applied like, not really an overclock, but he, re he had a limiter in place that he removed, which then power limit, which is kind of normal on ITX boards to hit a power limit before like an ATX board um, was what our limiting factor was now. But now as you can see, Cinebench runs just fine. The system's not clicking off. Um, our temperatures right now, as he's hitting 5.4 gigahertz all core, um, is sitting at about 77 to 81 C, depending on how hot the fluid is in there. In fact, after this run, I'll give you the score. I'll uh, fire up Intel Extreme uh, Tuning Utility so you can see the temps. And the reason why I'm even talking about this now is we owed you guys temperature improvements and temperature results, obviously, for the whole point of doing this water cooling loop in the first place. So that was a 30,259. I can tell you that's up because when I was running it prior to getting the system fixed, I know he was landing at like the 27,000, 28,000. So we're definitely up because he was having all sorts of limiters happening here. So our package temp right now in this kind of idle state with a lot of background stuff running. Um, I haven't touched his OS in any way. It's at 35C, all core run. 78. 77. 
5.36 gigahertz all core. That's, these are numbers that Phil has never seen. More importantly, what he's never seen is one of these reasons for throttling turned yellow. Those have always turned, one of those has always turned yellow for him, either thermal or power. Now, as you can see, none of them. Clearly the loop is working with the bottom 240, not even having the ideal situation of having proper fans on it. We just have these low profile fans that we affix to the bottom. So, <laughs> but they're doing something, they are helping. Now that you can see the system is working. Oh, and by the way, the GPU was hitting about 50 C after letting it run for an hour of looping benchmark. So that's so much better because Phil was actually seeing the FE get up into what, the 80s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've dropped like 30 C, maybe more on, your, on the GPU temp. Oh, and by the way, it's a 4080 now and not a 3090 because I didn't have the correct block for the 3090, but I could get it a 4080 block overnight. So I did that. So Phil got an upgrade, uh, about 40% speed improvement for this cheaper, lower temperature cost. If Jay takes your computer and messes it up and it takes longer than expected, in this case, three days, you get an upgrade. Let's get back to the problem at hand though. We were able to get a few runs in there and saw those temps, and then the PC did the shutdown thing. So we pulled the power plug out, let the caps discharge. Usually it takes about 10, 15 minutes for it to discharge fully, and allow the system to turn back on because the power button goes dead when it's in that state. We went into the BIOS, and then what we did was we put the fan headers to 100% because we were like, let's just see if we can get the cooling down. And what we, because what we noticed is these fans right here on the top were not running um, very fast. And I was like, okay, let's just exchange the air faster. That means better cooling. We noticed after we did that, the PC was shutting itself down like the second he would start the test. So he would get into the OS, start Cinebench and shut down. Then it's starting into the point to where I couldn't even like get the PC to turn back on, yell his name without it shutting back down. Because I was like, Phil, it's on, click. And we were getting from a few minutes of use down to a couple seconds of use to the, down to the point where I left it unplugged for, ironically, like 30 minutes and it didn't reset the breaker, which was like, what is happening here? One of the first things that we had suspected, and you'll see this in the, you saw this in the first part, if you haven't watched it yet, you should go watch it. We thought maybe the riser cable got damaged because I had to trim it to make it fit down in the radiator because literally the riser cable sitting like, just above the fins and there is a little bit of sag. So we thought maybe the pins on the bottom were contacting the radiator and shorting or something like that. And we did notice when we took the riser cable out, some of the pins had poked through the like electrical, not electrical tape, it's like a fabric tape on the bottom. So we thought maybe that was the case. So what we did was we, I took the system apart, technically apart. So the bottom is one screw and then it will just pop down. In fact, I'll kind of demonstrate this for you a little bit right now because this is actually a fairly, easy to service system, believe it or not, even though we have literally accounted for just about every square millimeter of use, except for this area right here. But we, this, this thing is literally making full efficient use of the space available to it. I have soft tubing on this for a reason. That way I can do stuff like this to check. So I was checking all these wires here. I was making sure nothing was um, pinched down there. So I had this case on its back and then I had the bottom open and the top open. So you had the main compartment here and then like going doors, the bottom and top are open like that. So nothing was pushed in. Ran a cable from here to here, plugged it in, turned it on and just let it sit here for a while. No image displayed or anything, no monitor hooked up, just let it run. And I went, okay, it's not turning off. So that's what made me think maybe the riser cable was the problem. So what I ended up doing was ordering a new riser cable. That's not even here yet. That arrives today. I now have a $55 high-end riser cable that I don't need for this build, but might need in the future. So put it back together and the system, and, and the, 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 it got even worse. How, well, I started thinking about this this morning when I came into work. I went, it's been sitting off all night long. I wanna see if I can maybe get it to, uh, will, will, it, will it turn back on? That was the thing that was concerning me was that yesterday before we left, I could not get it to the point to where it would turn back on. The system stability slash OCP or overcurrent protection problem was getting so bad to where it wouldn't even allow me to turn the system back on. So I also changed the power supply. That's why this one's sitting right here. Yes, without taking the loop apart, I was able to change this power supply and left the cables, but I was able to change the power supply. That right there was a feat that I'm proud of because I did not want to drain this system after the pain in the butt it was to fill, although I think filling now would be easy 
given the, the way I, I put the system together. Cooler Master, the way that the top and bottom come apart, that saved the day. I came in early this morning expecting to take it apart and just get a head start. I, I got here at seven, which is a couple hours before we normally start, so that um, when the guys got here, we could just get right into whatever the hell it was gonna be next, which I basically was gonna be testing the parts out on the table. Now we had already tested the parts. We knew they worked out of the table. Anyway, what I did was I took the top off this morning and I just double checked all my wires again. Headers were for the fans were plugged in, ARGBs were plugged in, um, everything was plugged in. But I happened to notice like, I leaned over like that and I could feel air coming out of this half of the rad, but not this half of the rad, which was very odd to me. So I went, is this fan not turning? And no, it wasn't. Now that's not that abnormal. Typically you'd just be like, okay, maybe the fan wire came loose or something. These are Lee and Lee fans, uni fans, which are daisy chained. The cable that plugs in is right here. So it has to go through the fan that wasn't turning into this fan. That was turning. That was turning. So I'm like, that's not how that's supposed to work. So then what I did was I stuck a screwdriver up in this fan and I tried turning it and it was stuck. And I went, okay, that's odd. How is it stuck? I know I've got the fan grill thing on there. There's a reason why you might've noticed when I lifted it up right now, I'll take this back off. This fan grill was not on that fan. And I know the fan turned. Well, when I talk about using every square millimeter available to us in this chassis, that was not a joke. So here's the thing, when I was trying to fill this thing up and it continued to just like get vapor locked, you know, air in the pump and then nothing could move. I added this fitting right here. That is basically my fill tube and reservoir now, essentially, which by the way, is a little air in there. I still have to try and get a little bit more of the air out. Anyway, what I noticed was the center of the fan lined up perfectly with that fitting. So the center round part of this grill was being pushed by that fitting against the fan hub. And that was keeping this fan from turning. So what my hypothesis now is that that fan being hooked up to the CPU header of the motherboard and not being allowed to turn, but set to PWM mode, this fan was turning, which was basically saying, hey, we got a PWM signal coming through. This fan not turning was probably causing some sort of a feedback loop of some sort, I don't know. I don't understand the, the electrical of this aspect of what I'm about to explain with daisy chain fans. This fan not being able to turn was somehow interfering with the PWM of the system. And when the CPU would, would go under load, the PWM itself would freak out because even when I got into the BIOS this morning and I noticed it was running, because I was able to run it in the BIOS for a while without it shutting down, mostly because I loosened the top. It got to the point to where, um, it just said not applicable for the RPM. And I'm like, that's really weird. So we don't know now if something was happening electrically, which I think was the case, because that's why we were getting an OCP of the power supply going, whoa, something's weird. Like it's trying to send 12 volt through PWM, through the fan header. The fans are taking the signal and sending some weird shit back to the PWM and the, C and the motherboard was going, this ain't right, shut down, let's save ourselves." And that's what we were dealing with. So what, to circle back to when Phil set the fans to 100%, all that did was create that whole situation faster. Because before it was set to like, like normal operation mode, which means the fans are barely turning, which is lower PWM, lower voltage, just to keep the fans at low until needed. Which is why when he would start the test, they would kick up and it would turn off. Setting it to 100% got to the point where I couldn't even get into Windows. In fact, one of the first things it did when I finally got it to boot this morning was it did a system startup repair. Because it crashed so many times. We have now been running it for several hours this morning on benchmarks and Cinebench and TimeSpy and Heaven, and it is solid. Simply because this was pushing against a fan that was not being allowed to turn. Because I'm not using the controller for these Lee and Lee fans, I've just got the fan uh, end plugged directly into the motherboard. That means with one fan being able to turn, one fan not being able to turn, one controller saying, hey, stop, and this controller's like, hey, no, go, and the CPU PWM is like, bro, figure your crap out, and then turns itself off. That was the problem. I never would have thought. So anyway, we got lucky because by taking this out is just, just enough clearance to where I tighten it down, it doesn't touch. The fan turns freely.
Yeah, I promised you guys a video on what the fix was. I've had people message me telling me, hey, my PC just randomly turns off. Like it will just like shut off, like OCP type of deal. I feel like one of my number one recommendations to these folks now is gonna be, make sure your fans aren't blocked. It seems like a really obvious thing, but in a case like that, you can't see the blades. Anyway, it's done. It took an extra day because of that. But at the end of the day, Phil's got a fully water-cooled system now with a 4080 in it. He's happy. He's ready to go home and play some flight sim without vomiting in VR because of the stutters, because he was getting CPU stutters because the CPU was overheating and running hot and uh, actually throttling. Yes, when you, when you hit a temperature that's too high and your CPU slows down, that is throttling. In fact, I have a whole video about what CPU throttling actually looks like. Well, that's because of GPU being too powerful and CPU being too slow, but whatever. If your stuff throttles because of a power slash temperature limitation, that's gonna be a much harder, much more harsh type of throttle. Anyway, there you go, it's done. At least you guys got the montage in this video. <laughs> Sorry I didn't put it in the other one, but it felt, it didn't feel right to do the montage on the system that wasn't working right. <laughs> All right guys, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend, we'll see you in the next one.